Okay guys, we model everything in the previous part and now we can set the animation. So we are about to attach the head, legs and tail as separate groups to the body and add one more curve to drive the animation. Starting with the head, we can use a sphere empty here. Adjust the scale so it's slightly bigger than the head. If we go back to the groups, we can select all objects in a group like that. Here it's important to clear and keep the transformations with Alt P. So we don't have any issues when we pair it now to the empty. You can check like that if it's all good. So now we only have to go to the constraints tab and add follow path to this empty. And if we pick the path as target and enable follow curve, then switch on which axis this to happen. It will slide along and we'll follow the curve tilt like that. Let's do the same with the legs. So hide the head collection and move the empty there. Check back the legs and we can add a different empty shape for them. We can select what's inside the group. Alt P to clear and keep the transformation. Then pair them to the empty. Adding again the follow path constraint. Pick the path as target. Change it to X axis and check follow curve so it's rotating along. We have the legs two times. So we can just change this group to front legs. Then select and duplicate everything. So we can move it to a new back legs collection. All we have to do now is offset the empties with this slide bar. The only thing left is the tail and we won't using constraints here. So just select everything and move it on the X axis. Place it on the end of the dragon somewhere here. If you think you need more length, you can just extrude the curve like that. Checking and maybe move it slightly up to be centered. We already set up our dragon and we can check in edit mode to see what we have. And so the way to animate it is by adding one more curve and connecting everything. But before that, I just want to animate a few more parts starting with these curves. Let's make the timeline bigger and adjust it to 200 frames. Going now to the object data tab. If we scroll down, here we can find start and end mapping. So the first factor will animate it from the start to the end of the curve. But we need this one from end to start. We are at the beginning of the animation and if we press I here, we can add keyframe, move few frames, offset the end factor and add another keyframe. We can now add more keyframes or just duplicate the ones that we have, like so. Playing the animation and we already have something, but still need to adjust a few more things to get it right. So we've got this squared profile at the end and we want to make this a sharp edge. And we can do it with a taper object. For this we need an additional object or Bezier curve in this case. Scale it down and let's put it there as taper object, enable map taper and we can already see how this affects the curve. The curve diameter now is controlled by this Bezier curve. Let me rotate it and go to the side view to see exactly how this thing works. So if you tap into edit mode and tweak the Bezier, you can see how this affects the curve. We can adjust the Bezier curve as we want it and if we add one more edge for example, we can make the curve tick at the end and thin at the center, just like that. The only bad thing is that we no longer have control of the curve radius with Alt S, but I guess we can just switch to edit mode and tweak the Bezier curve. We can also hide the taper object move it to a new collection and uncheck it. Let's now animate a few more curves, but give them a different game frames so we have nice animation where one of the curves is going down and the other one is coming up. Offset the end slider and add a key frame at the beginning of the animation. Move your frames and add another key frame. 
we can we can duplicate them or just add other for more variations. We can duplicate this one more time. And if we play, that's what we have it. Only set the taper object to this curve as well. Using the Bezier curve, not the circle. Enable map taper. Maybe increase the depth of the curve. The cool thing is that we can just link the animation data to different curves like that. So animate two or three, have some variations, then start linking to the other curves. The next part I want to animate is the comp on the back of the body. And for this part we will use a displace modifier. We need to place it on top but below the array and add a new texture from here. Reduce the strength a lot. And let's add the texture. There are different types and we will use the wood texture. We can change the pattern to rings. You can experiment also with second bases. But we will stay with sign. Reduce the strength a little bit more. And to animate it, we will use an empty. We have to change the coordinates to object and connect it to the empty. So now we can use the empty location to offset the texture like that. Go to the end frame and add a keyframe for the empty location. Then go to the first frame, move the empty on X axis and add another keyframe location. Running the animation to check what we have. And we can see that the whole mesh is moving. But we can make it still at the bottom so it looks like it's attached to the body, not floating freely like that. And that's quite simple. We only have to select the bottom vertices and assign them to a new vertex group that we can add it to the display modifier. Let's isolate the selection to see better what's happening. Adding the vertex group there. And we might need to flip it like that. And we have it. Everything is set and we can add one more curve for the position and movement of the dragon. Edit mode and adjusting it the way we want it. I'm doing something like this and we are starting from the bottom to the top, that's how we animate it. So now we are setting up the final part of the animation. Select the body path and add the curve modifier so we can connect it to the other curve and stick it there like that. We can do the same with the other body parts. Just duplicate the last curve modifier and change the curve object with the new path. So now it's still using the scale and the tilt of the first curve modifier, but it will also follow the second part. We can do the same with the other body part. Just duplicate the last curve modifier and change the curve object with the new part. The head and the legs will add in a different way, but for now we can also set the tail. It's just one more curve modifier for the part and the mesh. And because we move the tail on the x-axis, it will follow the same position when we connect it to the second path. To animate it, we just have to move the body part on the x-axis like that. The tail don't move and that's because it's not paired to the body. But when we do it for all the body parts, they should stay together. For the other groups, we have to change the target of the follow path constraint to the new curve that will drive the animation. Do the same with the legs. So their position now can be adjusted from the offset slider, just like that. We can start preparing the scene or just add the camera so we can get the final dragon posture. One more window for the camera view and change the resolution from horizontal to vertical. Place the camera where we want it and let's start preparing the dragon. 
Adjusting the second part in edit mode, but we can feel it's slow and heavy to tweak the vertices. We can go to auto modifiers and lower or disable them from the viewport, but there is a better solution to deal with this. This option before was available only in EV, but now we have it in Cycles 2, it's right here, simplify. So if it's enabled, it will optimize all the subdivision modifiers. So let's set this to 0, and we can see how it's disabled the subdivisions. There are some other options we can optimize too, just like that. Now if you go back to edit mode, it's much easier to do it. So let's get the shape right. If you feel you need more length, you can just go to edit mode with the first path selected and extrude the end edge on the X axis. We did some tweaks for the curve radius and from here we can adjust this if needed. Move the tail on the X axis so it's back where it was. If you also want to add depth to the dragon body, the easiest thing would be to select all the vertices and just increase the radius with Alt S, but this can deform slightly the mesh like you see here. So if you want to do it, you can just select the body, go to edit mode, move this part up and give it more depth like that. You might need to adjust the empty rotation as well and the other body parts, but that's the right way to do it. The best thing of this way of work is that we can always disable the constraints, which will bring the part back to its original position where we have front and side views and make it easier to adjust it. For example, if you want to make the legs bigger, we can scale them up a little bit. Then apply the scale on some of these parts. If it's only the scale, we can do this without disabling the constraint. Check in what we have and the resolution of the curve looks low. We can see the segment, so let's pop up the curve resolution to run it smoothly. For the animation, we can see that we are using the Bezier interpolation and that's what we need. The dragon will start slowly, then speed up in the middle and slow down at the end. If you want the same speed at all time, you need to use the linear interpolation instead. Now we need to animate the dragon in two ways. One is for the constraints, but let's begin with the body animation first. So with the body selected, go to the end of the animation and add the location keyframe. Then go to the beginning of the animation, grab and lock the body on the X axis and offset how much you need. I'll leave it here and add another keyframe for the starting location. So here we have one more option we can enable and that's the frame dropping, which will drop some of the frames that slow the animation and that's how we can play it in almost real time. We got this right and we can set up the constraints. Starting with a head and the way I'm doing this is checking first where is the head in relation to the body. This is at the end of the animation, adding a keyframe here, then going to the first frame and I'm offsetting the head to be on the same place as at the end of the animation. I think it was somewhere here. And add another keyframe. Then copy this value or whatever is on your end because we will need this for the legs offset. We are done with the head, so let's make the legs now. So let's add the keyframe there. Then go to the beginning, paste the head offset after the legs offset, which will bring the legs exactly on the same position as they were in the beginning in relation to the head. We can do the same for the back legs. And that's how we animate it. Thanks for watching guys, we already set most of the animation, 
So in the final part we are about to create all the materials and prepare our dragon for the final animation. So I hope to see you there.